Please subscribe to this channel for more videos related to Catholic Christian teaching. By divine providence in the narrow sense is understood the eternal divine world plan, the ordered reason of things toward their end pre-existing in the divine mind. It involves an act of cognition and of willing. The divine government of the world is the execution of the eternal divine world plan in time. The eternal world plan and its fulfillment in time are conjointly designated as divine providence in the wider sense. The First Vatican Council teaches this doctrine against pagan fatalism, deism, and materialism. God, by His providence, protects and governs all things that He has made, reaching mightily from one end of the earth to the other, and ordering all things well. Sacred scripture attests the operation of divine providence in numerous passages. The Old Testament specifically stresses the providence of God for the people of Israel and for individual figures of Israelite history. The Psalms are permeated by a belief in providence. Wisdom chapter 6 verse 8 affirms the universality of providence. He has made the little and the great, and he equally cares for all. Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount teaches that the providence of the Heavenly Father extends even to the most insignificant creatures, the birds of the air, the lilies and the grass of the field and is bestowed in special measure upon creatures endowed with reason. In the same way, St. Paul also proclaims the universality of divine providence. It is he who gives to all life and breath and all things. The Apostle St. Peter warns people to have trust in Divine Providence. Cast all your cares upon Him, for He cares for you. The Fathers defended Divine Providence against pagan fatalism, pagan astrology, and Gnostic Manichaean dualism. Monographs on Divine Providence were written in the times of the Fathers by St. John Chrysostom, Theodoret of Cyrus, Salvian of Marcel. St. Augustine glorified the wise and loving providence of God in his confessions and in his work, De Civitate Dei. Fatalism is a family of related philosophical doctrines that stretch the subjugation of all events or actions to fate or destiny, and is commonly associated with the consequent attitude of resignation in the face of future events which are thought to be inevitable. At its core, Manichaeism was a type of Gnosticism, a dualistic religion that offered salvation through special knowledge Gnosis, of spiritual truths. Dualism is the doctrine that the universe is built on two separate opposing principles, the material and the spiritual, all good and evil. Gnosticism 
certainly involves hostility toward the bodily material world which it sees as the realm of errors, imperfection and evil. St. Thomas establishes divine providence speculatively on the existing coordination between the world and its end. Since everything is created according to the idea of God, then also the ideas of the regulation of all things to an end exists from all eternity in the Spirit of God. St. Thomas bases the universality of divine providence on the omni-causality of God. God's causality as primum agens extends to every individual being. As every active principle is active for the sake of an end, so everything that God operates, that is, every created being, is adapted to an end and is therefore the object of divine providence. According to the object and grade of divine providence, one distinguishes general providence, which extends to all creatures, including those not endowed with reason. Special providence, which refers to all rational creatures, including sinners, and very special providence, which is granted to the predestined. According to the mode and manner of the fulfillment of the eternal plan of providence, one distinguishes mediate providence and immediate providence. In mediate providence, God utilizes mediate or secondary, that is, created causes. He himself executes his immediate providence. According to the nature and manner of the divine operation, one distinguishes ordinary providence and extraordinary providence. The former consists in the ordinary operation of God, the latter in an extraordinary intervention, for example, in miracles, inspiration, and in infallible decisions of faith. The divine plan of providence is fulfilled with infallible certainty through the divine government of the world, so that nothing happens without providence or independent of it. As God is the universal cause to which all particular causes are subordinated, it is impossible for any event to happen which is not foreseen and desired, or at least permitted, in the divine world plan. For God, therefore, there can be neither a contingency nor any fate existing above him or conjointly with him. By reason of God's absolute unchangeability, the eternal plan of providence is immutable. But this does not make prayer of petition purposeless, nor does it interfere with eternal plan of divine providence. 
On the contrary, prayer is from all eternity, foreseen and included as a secondary cause in divine providence. Physical evil, for example, suffering, illness, death, is not willed by God per se, that is, not as evil itself or as an end. Because God did not make death and He does not delight in the destruction of the living. For He created all things so that they might exist. God, however, wills physical evil, both natural evil as well as punitive evil, per accident, that is, as a means to a higher end of the physical order, for example, for the acquisition of a higher life, or of the moral order, for example, for chastisement or moral purification. Good things and bad Life and death, poverty and wealth, come from the Lord. According to its nature, sin or moral evil is a negation of God. It is willed by God neither per se nor per accidents that is, neither as an end nor as a means to an end. The Council of Trent has condemned as heretical the contrary doctrine of Calvin. For you are not a God who delights in wickedness. Evil will not sojourn with you. God merely permits sin. Because he has consideration for man's freedom, it was he who created humans in the beginning and he left them in the power of their own inclinations. And because he possesses the wisdom and the power to cause good to arise from evil, even though you intended to do harm to me, God intended it for good in order to preserve a numerous people as he is doing today. In the final end, moral evil will serve the supreme aim of the world, the glorification of God in as much as it reveals His mercy in forgiving and His justice in punishing. Please go to YouTube Retirement Talty Channel Playlist Divine Act of Creation for the complete series of these materials.